My name is Ian and welcome to Planted. I started in the horticultural industry back in the 80s and I willingly share my experience and knowledge with you to help you have more success with plants. The planted courtyard is growing very well. Let's go and have a look. I've always liked watching plants grow. Anyone that thinks that plants are slow and boring is not noticing all of the remarkable growth that happens in essentially a very short period of time. This is the Regal Lily. Started growing in late March, early April, and here we are in late June, and it's five feet tall. And each of these has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12 flowers on it that will be absolutely huge. If you don't have lily in your garden, you're missing out. It's a wonderful plant. There are some that I'm not so keen on, but the regale lily, regal lily, really are first rate. This is a very <laughs> interesting plant in that this is a plant that I found as a kid when I was three years old. Um, it's a euphorbia, and um, I just love looking at the remarkable architecture of the flowers and the seed pods. Very, very striking. We have here our first dahlia flower. Uh, lots more to come. I did a video on dahlias. This was very popular. Um, dahlias must be staked before they need it, otherwise they collapse and look terrible. This one is, what, uh, three feet high and doing very, very well. As we come forward through the planted courtyard, all sorts of things are exploding. This is a, a fig tree that I grew last year, and I'm hoping to keep it in this location and have it really fatten up and, and do well for me. Um, hopefully it's going to be one of those true hardy plants that is rather special. Now in the foreground, you can see we've got the pink anisodontia, we've got the white plumbago, and then the blue uh, amistad, the salvia amistad. I just love this combination. Layers of foliage, layers of flowers looking very, very smart. And then over here, we've got the golden hop, which has just gone bonkers. Last year, I had some netting going up and over the greenhouse, and um, I would never use plastic netting again. It's got a single purpose, and after that, you always throw it away. So it's just not worth it. So all I do now is I come by with my clippers and cut this back very, very hard, and uh, just keep it as this nice, big, strong, dense mound and uh, it's a great plant. It's remarkably abrasive. If ever you've got this hops and, and you go down, there's no resistance whatsoever, but there's lots of tiny little abrasions or spikes. Anyway, cool plant. Let's keep looking. So this corner has always been a bit of a problem area. It faces southwest. When the sun gets in there, it's blazing hot. It gets shaded earlier on in the morning and then also shaded when the sun goes around the corner. But it's so dry and I have to keep reminding myself to water it and not let it dry out. I have a fig in there called Brooklyn White, which is probably getting a bit too much shade. But I'll work on that. And that's the reason that I dug up the lilies and I moved them over here behind me. But I had two that snuck through and here they are flowering nicely with lots of buds on, and I have to keep trimming this out to get rid of the very aggressive um, hop. Now here's one of my biggest mistakes that I made last year, and that is here we've got the Anisodontia with the pink flowers, I talk about it a lot, and in the pot I had a plant called Allogyne, big blue flowers, I loved it, but I lost it, I got the labels mixed up, very similar leaf to Anisodontia, and I kept the Anisodontia and I threw out the Allagine by mistake. Here is uh, Dahlia, grew this from seed last year. Love the foliage, very rich, very tropical. And then in the foreground, you can see the white everlasting sweet pea, Lathrus latifolius alba. I grew that from seed, very difficult to find it as a plant, but something well worth having. Very fresh and very alive. Now in the background, we've got another fig. Uh, we've got the huge, spectacular tree dahlia that's just gone bonkers. That's technical for growing very, very fast, by the way. And you can start to see how we've got a bit more space around the seats this year and a little bit more growth on the sides. 
Last week I gave the wisteria a prune back and you can see that we've got pockets where the sunlight can get in there but even in a week the wisteria has come back yet again and I'll give that another 10 minute trim just to keep on top of it. This is a wonderful fig, this is the French fig and um, it's put on two feet of growth. The speed of these plants once they get established really is quite remarkable. In front of me is a California poppy which is going to start to look a little bit sad now. Once we get into the heat of the summer um, it's done its thing, it's flowered and it'll set lots of seed and the amount of seed that we get will be rather special and that's a spent seed pod. The seed has already done its thing and dropped. This must have been one of the really earlier ones. So this is the remarkable pace of growth that you can expect in a garden. So please don't think that gardens are static, that they kind of grow three or four inches and that's it. It's just not true. Plants will put on feet of growth if they're given the right conditions, the right water, even just a little bit of fertilizer and given good sunlight if that's what they need. So stick with it, have fun. Thank you for watching. Tell your friends, tell your family. Happy planting.